uh, the way I write is, I don't feel like you give away the magic, you know, you can tell, it's like the, the songs are in the guitar, or the air, or whatever, they're for somebody else to catch, or you if you're lucky, you know. And I'll you know, have maybe a story in mind, but usually not, you know, and I'll, I'll be playing my guitar, and the style of play that I play is called Travis Picking, and it follows a alternating bass line, so you have one instrument in your thumb and a melody line in your, your fingers, so there's already an arrangement starting to happen. And then there's like, well, now where does this vocal fit in around this already given melody? And that's where things got fun. And so you, I start to sing, but I sing a lot of things that sound like words. And I think what I've discovered is that I've been able to take things that sound like words and find a story in them. Like, oh, that, I said a thing there, and I'll listen to it over and over, and I'm convinced I've said the thing, and I'll write it down. And then there's, then there's the whole song waiting, and then I'll go back and say, clearly not the thing I said at all. It's hard to answer without kind of weaving in and out of like my other music influence, musical influences, you know, the music that was in my house, there was a lot of like Fleetwood Mac, which is all that very complex Travis picking. I didn't know, for, for, for years I didn't know it was one guitar. It sounds like two guitars, that's the thing, right? Paul Simon, Steve Earle was a, was a big part of what was being played, Willie Nelson. I did fall in love with Metallica thanks to my mom. Um, but, <laughs> But she, I mean, she had cool, eclectic taste in music, you know, and we didn't have a lot, but we had a, we had a record player and she had a lot of records. I just would like savor these records, these, especially these Paul Simon records and these Dylan records, and I couldn't tell you what was happening on guitar. When I picked up a guitar, it didn't sound like what they were doing. It wasn't until many, many years later that I understood the concept. It is difficult. It's sim it's, at its heart, it's a very simple style of play and it, le it leads to a wide open path to communicate lyrically because it's so simple. But what I was really drawn to were like these guys that could just like, like if you ever hear Mrs. Robinson and you really listen to like, there's two guys Travis picking and it, it's, it's four guitars in your mind and you can't make sense of it. And it's like, if it was like now, I'd be like, oh, that's a loop. But, but that's, there, there's no way, you know? Um, so there was the musicality factor, the level of musicality that I thought was beyond me. And also there was, when I started, when I started playing in bands, I was in punk rock bands, and then I was in hardcore bands, and I was in really heavy hardcore bands. Then I was in really heady math rock, hard rock bands. And then I started Dashboard as a, an extension of have simplicity compared to this complexity which is what Further Seems Forever was. It was an exercise, and passionate exercise in complexity. But when I found myself just picking up an acoustic guitar, it was like this really um, tender-footed version of this music that I'd grown up loving, this Towns, Towns Van Zandt, as, a, as a, another master of this finger-picking thing. And I, and I realized like my stories are not represented well with just me and a guitar because I can't do what they do. So what I did was work in reverse order of my influences. I really developed this polyrhythmic right hand that was based on like what the drums and guitar and bass do in hardcore music. Even though I think I was clearly not, I mean, sometimes I would find a way to scream in a song if it called for it. it looking back, maybe it never really called for it, but it, it seemed to work. I needed it, to, it called, I needed it at the time. And then Dashboard became successful I found my thing, I found my, my voice, so to speak, my creative voice. As much as I love like intricate guitar work and like bands like Trivium and Metallica, and, but also any kind of guitar player like that, like Brad Paisley, he's just like a, a master, a monster of like, how can there be so many notes? And how can, they all be the, how can they all be the right note? It's not just that it's fast, you know, like that Ingve stuff never really, I recognize that it's like, this is glorious. But where, I don't know where it is, what it is for me because I, I can't find the melody. I'm a melody guy. And I, I, maybe the whole problem here is that I've never applied myself to this thing because of all these preconceptions. So I bought a book on how to Travis pick, introduction to t Travis picking. I'd never taken lessons. I was always self-taught. It took a deep look at what Travis picking is and why it's important on this. It like cites the guys that, that, that are meaningful because they use this. And that was, if I just picked a how-to book, I wouldn't have learned as much. And so I spent two years straight learning how to play this style. Eight hours a day, like you do when you're 15 and you have time for that stuff. And then I spent another like two years trying to figure out where, where do I fit a melody in here now? The whole thing is melodic. And then remembering, oh, you can also strum too, like that's okay. So I, I started to realize that maybe there's, 
a place for me on this road. I will never achieve what my heroes have achieved. All I want to do is pay homage to what they've done and maybe make somebody want to buy that book or maybe buy that record and understand why that was so important to me, like what led me down this path so whole, wholeheartedly, you know? And it led to um, this band, which I think is a, is a great like gateway drug to this kind of, kind of music. And also the thing that I discovered was I've made so many records now. You know, you start to wonder, what have I got to say? What's my point of view? Has it changed? It changes so much. The music had changed my point of view. My life had changed. That changed my point of view. But the music had changed my point of view. And the liberation of finally being able to do that thing, like I can play some Lindsey Buckingham songs now. Before I realized I was going to start applying this songwriting and it would become Twin Forks was that John, who we'd sit outside the garage and have a little guitar pull all the time, let the steam out. When I'm handed a guitar, you know, I'm not going to, I don't play a, just like a punk rock song. Sometimes I do, maybe I play a Jawbreaker song or a Green Day song or something. I don't, I wouldn't pick up and play a, a, a dashboard song, you know, this isn't like how I would just like pass the time on a nice cool night. But I would play Galway Girl or, a, or a Towns Van Zandt song, or a song I love called The Cape. That's one I always, I always play um, by Guy Clark, beautiful song. And I was playing this Guy Clark song, he put his hand on, damped the strings. That kind of took me by surprise. And he said to me, Chris, why are you afraid to do what you love? Well, that really took this, that really hit me in the gut because I mean, I think that I've proven through, through uh, accolades and slings and arrows that I'm not afraid to do what I love. I'll, I'll go up there and I'll do it, whether you, you like it or not, I guess. He was right, I was chicken. So that's when I said, I'm, okay, I'll start writing this. And if it's terrible, it's terrible. Maybe nobody needs to hear it. If it becomes something great, then I'll, I'll, I'll release it. And it's got, I'm, I'm the, only person that can t tell you that I think it's great. I hope other people think it's great, but I released the record because I think it's great. Mm -hmm.